Hi, my name's Phil. I'm talking about politics. So in the last video, I talked about the challenges that may well be facing Conservative MPs when it comes to dealing with their own dear leader. But in this one, I'd like to discuss the challenge and opportunity waiting for Labour leader Keir Starmer this autumn as Parliament gets ready to return. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Boris Johnson, he's coming to the end of his summer holiday against the only scrutiny that he can't avoid, Parliament. At least not until he abolishes Parliament and crowns himself King Boris of Englandia. But until then, he's expected to turn up most Wednesdays whilst Parliament is sitting and desperately try to avoid having his arse handed to him by the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer. Uh, but as challenging as these exchanges are going to be for Boris Johnson and indeed governing in general, they are arguably just as challenging for Starmer and with the stakes just as high, if not higher. And I know what some may be thinking, well, you know, he's making it easy so far, he's absolutely trouncing Boris Johnson, but there's more to it than that, and, and he has got troubles coming up. But at least for Starmer, unlike Johnson, there is opportunity as well. For Johnson, it's purely a defensive game. Starmer can actually afford to go on the attack. Now, recently, John McDonnell, for those who don't know, this was Jeremy Corbyn's shadow chancellor while, while Corbyn was leader and also very, very close parliamentary friend for decades. Carried out an interview last week uh, that gave a welcome boost to Keir Starmer's leadership by saying that the new leader had his approach exactly right. He said Keir had got it exactly right. Must have confused a few in the old bubble chamber crew who buy the nonsense about Starmer not being a socialist. John McDonnell said, and I quote, if you look at his expressions in the past and throughout, of course he's a socialist. But he also said something interesting, actually made a few interesting observations, but none, there was one just in particular that resonated with me because it's something I said when Starmer first became leader. And I think it is the greatest challenge that Starmer has. So McDonald said that it was important not to pin all of what's going on on Boris Johnson because what McDonald fears is a boost in the polls for the Tories if they then switch to a more popular leader like Rishi Sunak. And I said this myself some time ago because the Conservatives are absolutely ruthless. Ruthless. If there is something you can admire about them from a political point of view, it is that they will ditch their leader when their leader is a liability they will blame all the crap that they've caused on that leader, off they go, carry out the sack of crap with you. The new leader comes in and they expect to wipe the slate clean. And the thing is, it works. It works. So what you need to make sure is that the Conservatives are taking the blame, that everything that's going on now is the Conservatives, not Boris Johnson, not Dominic Cummings, not alone anyway, the Conservatives. Not just one person who will absolutely be jettisoned when the Tories think the time is right. A time that hopefully will be coming quickly. It is easier said than done, however. It's not as simple as going, oh, you should do this, Keir. All right, thanks very much. I'll do that. It's a very tricky task because you do have to put on as much pressure as possible to Boris Johnson. Absolutely, because the more pressure you put on Johnson, the quicker he will be removed. And the more time Labour will have to work on his successor before the next general election. They want Johnson replaced really quickly so that they can start exposing whoever takes over. The worst thing would be for Johnson to hang on until there's only like a year or less to go before the next general election. And then there's not enough time to expose the new prime minister before going to the polls. We saw this. Boris Johnson got a huge boost. He went to the polls about half a year after becoming prime minister. There wasn't enough time to show him up. He'd, he hadn't had to do anything yet. Imagine now. Here we are. He's been Prime Minister for a little over a year. Would he still have the same support in the country now? I don't think so. Now, if possible, what Starmer wants to do is to heap so much pressure on Johnson this autumn that he's going to be facing challenges from within his own party before the end of the year. This may or may not be possible, but therein lies part of the challenge for autumn. Can you heap enough pressure? Because the two issues for Starmer, really, if you, you, there's lots and lots of things going to be going on. 
but you can condense it down to two things. One, the challenge of exposing the Conservatives as unsuitable for government. Which is not as challenging as it may sound. Two, key, promoting Labour as a much better alternative. Because showing a government is, be, is pretty bad, is only of limited use. No one really believed in the last general election that the Conservatives were a good government. No one really believed that. Um, but what you have to do is you have to convince people that there's an alternative. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Because people in Britain are fairly nihilistic at times. You know, yes, we know the government is crap, but you know, it's not like anyone else would do any better. I have to hear that all the time. And it's, it's annoying, but it is what it is. And the way to achieve this is, and this is, I think, the key challenge for Labour that I am not convinced about at the moment, it's going to have to be a very, very solid social media strategy. And, and this is where Labour have a bit of a problem because apart from the fact they don't seem to have a great social media team in place just yet. Now, ironically, one of the great successes of Jeremy Corbyn, there were not very many, I need to get out as many as I can. He was actually very effective with social media in the early days. Unfortunately, stood still. So by the time of the last general election, the Conservatives were winning on that. Yes, we know that they lied, but they were, in terms of just pure effect, their social media campaign was more effective. But to begin with, Corbyn's social media team were making all the gains. We need to get back to that. We need to be back to the ones leading on that. Um, but unfortunately, and, and I don't yet, I don't know whether Starmer is fully focused on that or whether he's got the right people to focus on it or not. I don't know. But what I do know is there is the little matter of Facebook, which is going to cause issues because it's a dreadful organisation. But it is essential to any effective social media campaign. Uh, during the height of the Black Lives Matter protest, Labour showed solidarity against Facebook for their sordid refusal to get on board, they dropped the platform. Labour stopped using Facebook for their political advertising. All very principled, but extremely unhelpful from a practical point of view. Because how do you come back from that? How do you come back from that? Uh, because there is only one P that will reverse the dreadful policies of this Conservative government, both past, present and future, because we've still got a few more years of them. And that P is not principles, it is power. Without power, you are just pissing in the wind. And to get power, Labour are going to have to spread a consistent, credible message to as much of the public as they can. And that means getting your voice out to where it will be heard. You can't tell people, come here and listen to us. You have to go to where they are already listening. And unfortunately, that is going to have to include Facebook. When it comes to parliamentary battles, I have got no doubt that Starmer will continue to pull Johnson's pants down every week. Yes, there will be some missed opportunities. I'll be saying every now and then, oh, you could have done that. Uh, but Boris Johnson is not a worthy opponent for the experienced prosecutor. But it will be absolutely vital to make the points to the wider public with an effective media campaign. Um, I mean, they're doing well on that in terms of engaging with other media as well. Uh, they're getting articles published in the right wing media, which is important for getting you know that message out to people who wouldn't normally vote for Labour. But the more effective that message gets out to everyone, the quicker public opinion will move. And the more quickly public opinion moves, the quicker Conservative MPs will move to get rid of Johnson. And when he is succeeded, the quicker that they can expose the next charlatan as well. And just to finish off, it is worth noting that so, so far I'm talking about the challenges for Labour in combating the Conservatives. The Conservatives are not the only opponents that Labour have to deal with. Now, on this particular occasion, I'm not talking about the SNP either, although that is a thing. Um, Labour are also causing trouble for Labour. This autumn will be a, a particularly unpleasant flashpoint. The release of the Equalities Commission report into anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, which is expected to be published next month, is going to be a very, very tough time. Now, I have no idea exactly how damaging it's going to be, I can guess. And I also don't know how many of the people on the hard left 
are going to react to it. I have little doubt that some of them will somehow say that human rights organisations are corrupt if the alternative is to accept that Corbyn made mistakes. And you can also guarantee that the Conservative Party will be all over it. Um, they won't need a dead cat that week. They'll be using this. They will be poking at the Labour Party over this. They'll be glad of the respite from their own failures. And absolutely the right-wing press will be all over it as well. So Starmer needs to be able to defuse that one quickly and turn attention back to the current Conservative leader as opposed to the past Labour leader. And therein, of course, lies his chance of doing so. He's had a copy of the draft report. He's not going to be surprised by anything that's revealed. And of course, that's given him time to prepare. I'm not sure to what extent you can mitigate something like this, but at worst, it may just be a case of riding it out. And hopefully it should be relatively straightforward to ride it out. You may suffer initially, but it shouldn't last too long because it's not the current leadership that's responsible and the current leadership is following the recommendations in the report. So it won't be long before there's another government fiasco to draw attention away from something that, let's face facts, the majority of people who would consider or would support the Conservatives, it's not a top priority for them, that particular issue. And also, it's in the past. They know that it's, it's only of limited interest trying to poke at the previous Labour leader if you can't make it stick to the current Labour leader. But those are my thoughts. Uh, it is going to be a very, very challenging few months for Keir Starmer, just like Boris Johnson. Um, and we'll just have to see who comes out on top. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.